provide another oh, no comic way. blur of nonsense but bullshit from me. Thank you all. Now, I think the Dixie Cracks would understand it all. Looking at the polls. Yeah, Dixie Cracks don't exist anymore. They don't get on polls for anyone from under the age of 40. Um, Cincinnati City, it's right there. No, it doesn't need applause. Um, it was founded on brewing beer and pork products. It's a fucking Muslim's nightmare, all right? And every time I think about, oh, staying away, I just think of the human kumquat known as John McCain. Back in the day, him up there, out my fringe. Eat the pig product part with the pork barrel spinning. Pork barrels. I like pork barrels, you know why? <laughs> Because you know the terrorists will stay out of those barrels, am I right? <laughs> Real funny, John. You know what I think is funny? This. <laughs> you know why? Because I can do it, and you can, alright? <laughs> Put fucking monkey bars in your front lawn, see how funny that is. Yeah. Well, anyways, let's segue back to the small world. Um. Yeah, uh, the last time I was here, Three Inches of Blood was playing in the ballroom. Um, they're a little bit like the band playing now. Um, they're probably a little bit softer, but, you know, close. Uh, and there was some dude in there came in all huffing tough. <laughs> I don't like that old man. The fuck is his problem, man? Jesus, man. It's fucking awesome, alright? Metal is the only genre of music where you don't express your love for it by going, yeah, all right, you try to pummel the shit out of the guy next to you, be like, fuck yeah, oh, that riff is awesome, man. oh, jeez, oh, oh, this is my favorite song, I hope you're about ready to die, all right, fuck, I'm gonna get a gun. Still my favorite song, just because you're alive. <laughs> They have things like that. The funny part was there actually is like the scary metal, like the one that Nancy Reagan actually was referring to when she said don't listen to it. There was seriously an opening band called Soul Ride. There's always like cool, nerdy, just metal dudes of all kinds doing each different style. And then there's like the one out of 20 bands who are like the trailer trash, just like I'll talk about like what happens in the Cannibal Corpse song, like hatching to the throat, like all this pretty fucking cool, you know, like a horror movie, and they're like, yeah, it's kind of fucking cool because I've done that like 14 times, man. And it's like, oh, that's really fucking weird, actually. <laughs> and then, the, the best part was that this dude literally looked like the corpse of Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh, if Billy Ray Cyrus gained like an extra 7,000 pounds and then died and then came back to life and then got out of rehab for crystal meth or some shit. But the weirdest part was that his mullet also looked like it just got a rehab from math. It was like a fucking dead raccoon just hanging down on the side. I was like, I really don't want to hear a song from you about like murdering people and you know worshiping Ed Gein and other you know uh, delightful citizens like that. But uh, there's one thing it, the, the, the show Headbangers Ball. Uh, I don't even know if it's a show anymore, but uh, we all have YouTube. You can watch fucking anything. Uh, and the one, and remember on there, Rob Zombie pointing out, like, yeah, you can, Headbangers Ball is actually kind of weird. You can watch anything from Bon Jovi to Napalm Death on there. And, uh, yeah, one of the things that, you know, I don't really like any, like, the hair metal band, well, they're extremely entertaining, but I just don't really like them. Uh, but, he, they, you know, they talk about the strip clubs and all uh, the big parties and champagne. I legitimately do not get strip clubs at all. I guess I'm the biggest fucking pussy around, whatever. But honestly, don't get why on earth you would want to have a tree trunk boner getting grinded on and have absolutely no thought of sexual release unless you're like a weird fucking deviant who gets off by like prematurely coming. Jokes <laughs> on you! A lot cheaper than a hooker, alright, so, I don't know, I guess that's cool. But, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of that shit. I also like to point out the phrases, you know, so many douchebags are obsessed with getting pussy, but they never, they fear, mortally, being a pussy, you know? Most people don't chase after, incessantly, what they don't want to become, you know, like dreams or something. Uh, 
Most people, you know, if you were a pussy and you were trying to get some, it would really be a delightful spin on the phrase, go fuck yourself, all right? It sounds like something that come at the end of like a Billy Graham segment or something. And hey kids, for all you pussies out there, go fuck yourself, I'm Billy Graham. All right, see you next time. So that's what it is. Uh, so, yeah, but anyways, again, the tree trunk boner, you know, it's, it's worthy enough of Arbor Day, but you can't touch anyone because, you know, you're, the bouncer's gonna throw you the fuck out. Uh, but I guess the only real function of strip club would be, like, if that was some kind of weird, like, bro-y pre-gaming for go getting, like, a really cheap hooker afterwards. Like, oh uh, man, you thought that was good. Wait till we actually have sex, man, all right? But here we have a dilemma. You've got a handful of singles. You don't know. You don't know. You know. You want to spend some decent amount of money so you don't get, you know, AIDS or some shit or a hypodermic needle stuck in your dick or something. But you know, I think the singles is what's keeping the dollar menu hookers in business. All right. So hey, maybe the strip clubs are just keeping around crack whores and math addicts. I still don't know. It's about the third time I've referenced math. Uh, you know, uh, once or another. Anyways. Moving on to another uh, fatally fun topic of mine. Does anyone remember the oh-so-fun tree that was referred to as Freedom Fries? Now, I didn't really get down with Freedom Fries for like, yeah, we'll show the French. <laughs> yeah, French fries. Every time I used to eat a French fry, I used to fucking salute the French flag. Not anymore, all right? now. Now, from here on, first of all, if you actually said the phrase Freedom Fries with, like, all patriotic seriousness, that's not really someone you want supporting your fucking country anyway. But then I realized that maybe they were just being smart and saying, hey, instead of literally shoving down every d dipshit patriot, the idea of freedom and all this, maybe they could just name freedom the things that Americans already willingly shove down their gullet like no fucking tomorrow. And that's the way to get really freedom in there. Hey, why the fuck not, I guess? Why not? But there's one other little part there. Uh, there's a part of me, a lot of my friends, vegan and vegetarians, try to get down with some of that stuff once in a while, but uh, it's obviously not the poster boy here of a fucking humane diet. Now, there's two sides of me. There are some times where I'll go all out with the diet and have a, you know, really feeling good, and then I just go back to chain smoking joints that have been dipped in donut glaze and fucking <laughs> it's, it's, you think you've been high, I think you've been high. Um, now the thing is, you know, there, there's, I was like, man, I guess I'm really like two different kind of burgers, man. I'm that one real black bean, humane little portobello mushroom burger with cheese from a goat that's been massaged more than Alex Bottom's balls. And, you know, and, man, you feel like you could run a marathon after that. Then you feel like the White Castle burgers, which is the time you could probably shit a marathon afterwards. But the other part of me that feels more like I really am is, does anyone remember the Roundup Burger from Burger King at all? The, see, again, I'm not surprised that I look like a fucking Roundup Burger after a while. I'm just surprised that it actually got on the menu. The fact that there had to be some chef named Sloppy who just like, you remember like, you know, on the Brady Bunch when Greg would get the tiki and we would be you know, Clint Eastwood steps into the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think every time the word Roundup Burger was said, the noise boing just happened, just out of fucking nowhere. And uh, when he, when this dude named Sloppy walked in there, you know, boing, he's like, well, uh, yeah, my name's Sloppy. Uh, let me tell you about uh, the newest product we have. Um, well, basically, you can take the uh, fat beef patty, uh, shove a couple melted cheese on there, uh, a little barbecue sauce, you know, help hint the name Roundup. And, uh, well, I figured I might as well round up a couple underbrains, because, I mean, fuck it, you only live once. Shove that bad boy on there, and uh, there we got the Roundup burger. Thank you. I'm gonna, uh, gonna take my smack back right now. <laughs> Could you imagine any preppy, white collar dude in, at the Burger King meeting, like, explaining what just happened about, like, well, first we fry the onion rings to a golden brown, and now we have the Roundup Burger. That probably didn't fucking happen at all. But, that's the wonderful world of Burger King. I don't work at a fast food restaurant. Sometimes I wish I did compared to where I work. I work at a restaurant, just sit down, pizza place, not that big of a deal. But, 
the amount of times the whole sit down, man, what a good feeling vibe place. Uh, the amount of times that they deal with their employees, and I'm a dishwasher, so I'm obviously at the fucking bottom of the barrel here. Uh, quite literally sometimes. But anyways, the ways that the general managers at restaurants deal with like, oh, well, uh, let's, let's handle this, okay? There's some bitch who just fucking every goddamn time you knew she wasn't gonna put the shit away, I'd be like, can you please, can you please? And I finally just fucking went off on her. Didn't go over well, at very much at all. Came back, and then the boss was like, oh, you know, uh, work, uh, uh, you know, uh, we we'll get mad, so we'll just, uh, you know, try, try to communicate a little bit better. And then it occurred to me that no matter what this bitch fucking did, she could have taken a shit on my face. The boss would have still said the same thing along the lines of, uh, yeah, uh, Mark, uh, yeah, just real quick, uh, understand, uh, Shitty, uh, kind of took a dump on your face, okay? Um, it's a little gross, I admit, okay? Uh, but just remember, um, we're all a team here, okay? So, you know, and, you know, occasionally team members, uh, take shits on people's faces, alright? Um, we still want to hit a home run at the end of the night, okay? So, uh, just remember, uh, do his own way, okay? Thank you. Uh, uh and, uh, you know, if someone, if you see a turd coming, um, just, you know, Communicate a little bit better with the turd. Uh, maybe you'll have some better outcome. Uh, just give it a look. Well, uh, someone mentioned uh, a strip club buffet combo. Uh, which is a little ironic because we actually, I actually have a pretty good friend who talked about going to a strip club in Lawrenceburg and did not have a single complaint about, you know, the titties and the girls or any of that. He just came back and told me that the food there was terrible. <laughs> and I said, you went to a fucking strip club, you should be happy there wasn't cum in there. What are you talking about? The food was bad. Do you think that's the first time the bouncer, like, uh, sir, sir. Oh, oh god, I'm sorry, did, did the girls do something? <laughs> did they, I, I hope they didn't cook this. You kind of did. <laughs> Is, is this gonna pack? Can I see a menu, please? Nah, no, this. You don't have veggie burgers. I don't fucking understand. No, no. That's all I got. Thank you all very much.